did it like right afterwards like you we hung up with you went over to i went over to the other studio i was like yo that was really really good if she wants to like there's no way she wants to though there's no way someone like that wants to get up on a saturday to do this this joke of a show it's like yeah you're right let's find out though and that's how it happened that was my understanding what a psycho i was yeah 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 what a I mean, time you, you kind of had to be to get like it's, it's hard work to get places and that was part of the hard work journey for you and and me and a whole lot of people uh what was the song please there was no time to listen to old music today i had to listen to f up the disco by justin timberlake eight times in a row Such on my drive into work something mid your Woo. face is mid jacob your face is mid what's your mama's number i want her to know that she's raising a bad person wow gosh but to be fair that's how egregious other jacobs take other that Jacob is Wow, he said today. that the first four songs, the first four songs of Justin Timberlake's new album put him to sleep. What's wrong with him? Have you heard of Taste? What is wrong with him? Boo, Jacob. Boo. It's okay. He probably is Boo. too excited about that country concert coming here to. Oh, is that this weekend? Really get it? Wait. I don't think so. No. Next okay. month. We have plenty right. of time. So what, what, what country concert is coming? No, I just he's like getting ready for it. Cody Johnson. Oh, okay. He can't, you know, he can't like both. It, it's almost sold out according to other Jacob. Hey, get your tickets to the All Live Matters tour before it sells out. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to see what that crowd looks like. Oh boy. Mike. I'm just excited for Justin. <sighs> Can we keep the Justin commercial forever? No. Please. No. What's up, everybody? It is Friday, March 15th. It is going to be a good day. Jessica Benson with you from the Grind City Media Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. CJ Hurt behind the glass. Coming up on today's show, woof, new more March Madness for the Memphis Tigers. A tumultuous season ends with a giant thud in their first game of the AAC tournament. We will talk about the loss, talk about Penny Hardaway's comments following said loss and where they go from here. We will get into some miscellaneous sports stories, including other NCAA tournament games or excuse me conference tournament games that we are looking forward to this weekend selection sunday is on sunday for both the men and the women and then begins one of the most fun times of the year plus i don't know who justin herbert is going to throw to in los angeles next year after keenan allen was announced to be headed to the chicago bears we'll talk about all that dustin Starr is going to join us about 40 50 minutes in because smackdown comes to Memphis tonight. The Rock will be right here at FedEx Forum. I will be there. I need Dustin Starr to get me primed and prepped for WWE SmackDown, which is later tonight. And then we'll end with some Music Friday. Big Music Friday. The new Justin Timberlake album dropped. And I can't say that there are no skips, but there are very few skips. And it really lit up my morning. Also, the new Casey Musgraves album makes me feel like I want to skip through a field. We found out the name of Beyonce's album that comes out in a couple of weeks. Some other music stories as well. It's Friday, let's have some fun. Let's go. She's looking for the hot hand. Jaren got the step, Woo! got the floor. There's no layups on that one. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Real country music with Cody Johnson, live. Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best. The Leather Tour with Cody Johnson with special guest Justin Moore also featuring Drake Milligan 
VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office. Cody Johnson. Finally. The most electrifying man in entertainment. If you smell what the bloodline is cooking. What does The Rock have in store for Friday Night SmackDown? You can never guess what's coming next. Live this Friday. Tickets on sale now. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. Oh, I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at FluffyGuy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be Fluffy World Tour. We're going dancing. Welcome to Fandom 101. We need you going crazy in the stands. Oh! Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Division I men's basketball first and second rounds this March in Memphis, Tennessee. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash MBB tickets. Class dismissed. Presents the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live from the Grind City Media Studios on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday to all of us on this absolutely disgusting day in Memphis. It is so rainy, it is so gross and gloomy outside. It's almost as gross and gloomy as the Memphis Tigers, whose season came to an end yesterday with a 71 to 65 loss to Wichita State in their first game of the AAC tournament, the second round officially of the AAC tournament. CJ. Yo. That was bad. <laughs> when we sat here yesterday, previewing yesterday's game and it really boiled down to, well, they have to win four games in four days and there's really nothing more you can say than that. I can honestly say I did not expect them to lose to Wichita State. And I had a, I a healthy amount of skepticism about this team because I have eyes and I have watched them play far too many games. You said that, and we were talking mm -hmm. off air. Bennett came in and you said that yes. statement, and I feel like I don't want to speak for Big Bad Bennett. Right. But I feel like we both were like, how could you not? Mm -hmm. What about them has led you not mm -hmm. to believe that or feel like the they are capable and they would lose to Wichita State? I thought they were done. I thought they were done against Wichita State. Well, right. you were correct. I, and I, you would be correct. You can't. And I don't like being the one to tell you the bad news yeah. before the thing happens, right? But you can see this thing, this thing being the Memphis Tigers, shivering and shaking on the pavement, right? And you know, oh, if help doesn't get here soon, help's not getting here. I wouldn't that, even that tell. That season is, is, is dead. Like, we yeah. knew the season was dead in February. And they went out there and effectively – Killed it. They pulled the plug mm -hmm. on it against Wichita State. Which... Shivering and shaking would require them to show any form of care. <laughs> it was more like just potato. <laughs> They've well, just potatoed well, yeah, for the last two games. That's how the flat line yeah. happens. You're you're on the you might not catch the Mets. Somebody out there catches it. You're on the pavement. Mm -hmm. You're wet. Some stuff has happened. Mm -hmm. You're shaking, trying to fight, mm -hmm. and then you just go flat. And that and that's just and it. That's it. And the, the shivering and shaking part was February. And they just went flat. Again, I didn't think I didn't think they would score in the second half. I went to crave for the cheesecake. Uh, great cheesecake, by the way. Yes. Pie day. Loved it. 
um, grabbed a couple of uh, cheesecake filled cookies, which were great. And I had to put my cookies it down. Good. I was like, yo, I do not want to eat this cookie while watching this game because mm-hmm. it's taken you away don't from ruin the, the cookie. Yeah, it's taken away that. from the cookie. Like I can't do that. Hit the cookie away and just sat and watched it. And again, the, the second half was like, oh, shit, they're not going to score. Two for 14, two for 14 to start the second half. Five minutes, six minutes without scoring? Mm-hmm. Were they were they leading going? I can't remember. Were they leading going into half? No, they were down game? either two or three at half. And then boom. And then they start two of 14. And down they get down 12, 14. 10, I think down they were down 14? 14. Maybe 16 at one point. Um, and then they come back. And you're like, oh, did we bury them too soon? No. And you know what? Shame on me. Because I always start from a, a place of positivity. I try. It's a Friday. I know it's raining outside. But if the weekend is almost here. If you watched yesterday's game and thought to yourself, I never, ever, 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 ever want to see that Memphis Tigers team ever again, I have great news for you. You don't have to because Penny Hardaway, after the loss, said that they are not going to play in the NIT. And granted, this was right after a very disappointing loss. Let's take a listen to how Penny addressed it himself so that we don't misshape his words, but this was his comments when it came to would Memphis be entertaining an NIT bid following their early exit. Penny, if, if an NIT invitation is extended... Zero. No, sir. I'm not accepting any invitations. Any, uh, I mean, what's the thought process behind that? Just the decision... I'm just making that right now. I'll talk to uh, the administration, but I'm not looking to play no more NITs. Now, I'm sorry. I'm not disrespecting NIT. It's just, it's been a tough season already. Mom been in and out of hospital, in the hospital now with throat cancer, dealing with a whole lot and just dealing with basketball at the same time. I know this is my job, but that's not my first option. Can we get that video? Of that, just one more time. He doesn't even get through. The camera is not even on Penny. The question is still ongoing. Now let's just run the beginning of that w- one more time. One more time. Look at the look at Jones's reaction. Penny, look at their reaction. The NIT invitation is extended. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> do it again, Jacob. Do it again. Run it again. Run it again. Do it again. The NIT invitation is extended. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> It one is the... Wait, one more time. I hadn't seen it. I saw the transcripts oh, of it. Oh, I've watched it like 10 times. <laughs> Zero. Oh, they don't, they didn't know that. No, of course not. The game just ended. The question's not even at it. Zero. Whoop, squirrel. <laughs> the rapidity at which their heads whip to Penny. Because for them, it means it's, it's over, over. And I know people look at it and I joke like, oh, thank, thank the dear heavens above, that we don't have to witness that team yet again. But there is also something in me that says, you can't just turn down the NIT. And I don't even get up for the sanctity of the NIT because we had this conversation last season when North Carolina, one of the most disappointing uh, ends to a season and they don't make the NCAA tournament and they didn't accept the NIT bid. And people came around the conversation of, like, what are you, too big, too good for the NIT? At least they had respect behind them this Memphis team you can't big dog the NIT after the season that you just had come on play and listen I don't want to watch it they clearly don't want to play it and I saw a lot of people be well of course they're not going to play it would it be embarrassing you go lose in the NIT more embarrassing than the loss you just took to Wichita State no one's going to care it'll be another embarrassment on there it absolutely would but like I, I get that listen coaches are people players of people they go through things they just do like if they if the, from that video it looked like Jones and Tomlin wanted to play from that video and so if, if you they've are, looked like two of the only players if, who want to play this whole season so if you, yes if you are dealing with personal things like step away let the assistants run it mm-hmm. let those players because it's the end of their college career take man. a vote let them <laughs> let them run it. Like, let them go out there and play, and you just sit sit right. out for the NIT run, and let let whatever happens uh, happens. I understand that health of family members is one of the most important things in this world, yes. way more important than uh, NIT tournament, uh, certainly, right? But if they were going to the big dance, he wouldn't like sit out of that because mom's has cancer. 
But it's the NIT. I understand that. Let the players go out there and play because those two look like what the what the f. Like, yo, oh, it's Tom was like, oh my gosh. They look like me when I learned it's not NIT for the not in tournament. What? Mm. National Invitation Tournament. <sighs> Let them play. Let them play. But in the meantime, because it all appears as of yesterday, they will not. This is it. The, the book closes on this season, and it is entirely safe and fair to say that this is the low point of the Penny Hardaway era at Memphis thus far. This season, in its totality, was a low point. This is what you hope is rock bottom. Penny Hardaway is going to have to go out there and recruit his tail off, have the NIL collections coming in fruitful bounties when it comes to figuring out how to build a team next year because you look at this season and truly if you on january 18th went into a cave and said all right i'm gonna hibernate for a couple of months i'm gonna come back out in march and see what this tigers team does in the ncaa tournament because on january 18th memphis was 15 and 2 they were ranked 10th in the ap standings they were 30th in the computer rankings and their tough part of their schedule was behind them. Like, the non-con is our season, is the new we're fine in the West. It did not age well at all, especially because your non-conference opponents who looked big and sexy in the immediate aftermath of those wins, Michigan, Missouri. I don't think Missouri won a game in 2024. Arkansas? Yep. They were great in the moment. They did not stand the test of being good wins. And then you entered conference play and you end up losing to teams like South Florida, who ends up being the best team in the conference, but Tulane, who finished 10th in the AAC, UAB, who finished fourth, Rice, dead last in the AAC. As Devin Walker says, you lost to food. North Texas, 7th in the American, SMU, 6th in the American, and then FAU at the end of the season. And finally, Wichita State, the 12th ranked team or the 12th best team in the American this season. Not the olden days of the Wichita State Shockers. No, a below 500 Wichita State team who was 150-something in the net, who came in there and upset you, who is able to use a picture that you took earlier in the season because you beat Wichita State twice. And sure, it's hard to beat a team three times. Whatever. Miss me with that. It's the tournament. Memphis had made fun of Wichita State after one of their wins with a locker room picture. So you want to know what Wichita State did? They took that picture and posted it as their tweet after beating Memphis yesterday. And they're out there at center court at the AAC tournament doing the thumbs down and mocking Memphis. You're at a place where the 12th best team in a bad AAC who is barely probably going to get two teams into the tournament this year is mocking you? That is a low. And it's so low because it's compounded on the fact that they were out-hustled by that team, they were out-defended by that team, they were out-shot by that team. Everything. Wichita State deserved the win. Wichita State looked like a team that wanted to win that game more. And how many times have we said that this season with Memphis? Far too many. Had the one-point lead, about two minutes, three minutes left in the game. And I do believe Wichita State goes on a 7-0 run. Right? Memphis had taken Memphis, for all of the bad that they did. And it was a lot of bad that they did in that game. They found a way late to scratch, fight, and call their way back. I thought David Jones was about to go on one of those historic March-type runs. Mm -hmm. He was doing offensively everything he could to bring this team back. They take the lead. One point, Wichita State. Layup, three-pointer, layup, 7.70 seven run yeah. to take the lead for good with a minute and a half left, and there's nothing that the Tigers can do about it from that point. On. It's just been that that type of, of season for them. And I think you're you're right, like spot on about the, the wins that the Tigers had in the out of conference. And once once we played the full season, this is why rankings can be kind of silly. Once we play the full season, we know who's good and who's mm -hmm. not. We thought Missouri was good. We thought Arkansas was good. Arkansas was ranked when the Tigers yep. won. We thought Michigan who was coming off uh, what we thought at the time was a big win over St. Joseph's, I think. <laughs> we thought they were good. Those dudes won eight games. When you look at the Tigers out of conference, right, the, the, the out of conference is the, the season for the Tigers. When you look at it, two, maybe two tournament teams? 
Clemson and VCU. Is VCU? I don't in? know. They're Clemson, Stadium Virginia. Texas yeah, Virgi- A&M. Virginia should be in. So Clemson, Virginia, Texas A&M, like, and Virginia and Texas A&M are bubble teams. I think they're on. I think Virginia's on the right side, A&M on the wrong side. Last time I checked, like that's it. That was it. So that that out of conference schedule was a bit of a mirage by no fault of the Memphis Tigers. They went out there and scheduled teams. Penny Hardaway did did a great job trying to schedule teams that have been good recently and historically. And so they went out there and yeah. he did that. They took care of business there. But again, it was kind of a mirage because they were beating teams that weren't really good. And then they got into the conference slate where everybody kind of knows what you're doing. And they just couldn't beat the, the teams that they were supposed to beat. They sure. couldn't beat the Wichita States. They couldn't beat the Rices. They couldn't beat the, what, Rice. Tulane's, Tulsa's of, of the world? Like They, they beat they, Tulsa. Okay. <laughs> was it Tulane? Yeah, it was one of the teams. Two couldn't beat the Tulane's of, of the world and split with UAB? Like, mm-hmm. that's that's rough. North Texas, they, they lost to? Split with SMU? Split with SMU? Like, that's you, you've you got to be better than that. Random tangent. Did you see the crowd at the SMU game last night, the second game of the AAC tournament? Uh-uh. No one was there. Well, nobody was, nobody nobody was there for the Tigers game. Nobody was there. It was dead. Was it completely empty? Because the Tigers I mean, game was pretty damn empty. Who's, who posted that It was picture? pretty empty. It was sparse <laughs> okay but like by sparse i mean like maybe 30 people oh like i'm not i'm well i don't think i'm exaggerating couple, let's take a quick couple hundred people at the Tigers. couple game. hundred people yeah. at the tiger's game we'll take a quick break we'll talk about penny hardaway on the other side because he did have some other interesting comments following yesterday's loss and i know there is a big camp of well if it was any other coach penny hardaway would be fired after that loss i'm not so sure about that that said Next season feels like a critical juncture for the University of Memphis and Penny Hardaway. We'll talk about that along with some other tournament things to look forward to this weekend. Some big NFL news as well when we come back. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. We know there's only one team you want to watch. And Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Anticipate each challenge. Make a quick response. Capitalize on every opportunity. 
and win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. I think it might be unfair a little bit to just make an album trashing him. Because what is he going to do? Make a crappy movie trashing her? You know what I would do? I would write songs about her. I think well, he's an actor, right? Yeah, I don't care. I just write bad songs about her. I'd just be like, "In you were tall with long legs, but I hated your guts because you were so mean. Nobody really knows how awful you are." I just write bad. If you're gonna write bad songs about me, I'm gonna write bad okay. songs about you. Okay. The Gary Parish Show live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. As promised, I found the picture of the crowd from the final session of the AAC tournament yesterday. It was SMU Temple. Would you call this a smattering of a crowd? Oh, wow. <laughs> I told you. It came across my timeline, and I was like, oh, certainly it's it's can't be representative of what's going No, this was the crowd at the SMU Temple game and the tournaments in Fort Worth. And I know that nobody in Dallas gives a poo about SMU basketball, but still, that's the team that made it to the ACC. It will never Money. <laughs> well, that's that's money why. makes the world go round. <laughs> you don't have to be good if you got the money. You sure. don't have to have passionate fans if you got the money. You don't have to have anything as long as you have the money. And other people are moving on, right? Like that was they were desperate. The ACC money was money and movement. The ACC and was desperate. Correct. Like yeah, that's all that matters. Memphis got to get some oil. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go start digging. We can. <laughs> Do you have a drill? Very, very well. Hey, very clearly, <laughs> having some of the best water in the world is not going to get you into Shoot. one of these conferences. You don't think we can sell our maybe. tap water? Well, maybe. Why haven't we tried that? Well, maybe when the apocalyptic land hellscape takes over, right? Maybe then when that's, water is traded that's as when currency, Memphis's value that's when Memphis's value skyrockets. skyrockets. Yeah. I, I agree. I saw yesterday there were reports. Have you ever used a neti pot? Like the thing that cleans out your sinuses. No, because you could end up with... With a brain-eating amoeba. With something up here. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, no. I used to use, like, a doctor prescribed to me when I was a kid, um, like a saline solution bottle where you shoot right. it up your nose and right. all the stuff comes out the other side. And I never understood. It was never made so clear the importance of making sure that you put the little salt packet in or whatever is in that packet that makes the water that comes out of your tap okay enough to shoot up your nostril. Yeah. I'm pretty sure a couple of times I just raw dogged that tap water and it went right up there so and thank you i'm so grateful that i do not have a brain eating amoeba i think you do I or think maybe i do i think that's why you <laughs> are what you I are i am the way i am yeah people don't people don't get this so much people don't get to see you off off camera you do some real uh interesting things off camera <laughs> I don't know what you, you're talking it's, about. It's, it's never, ever, ever, if you take nothing else away from this show, mm. it's never, ever good to raw dog things. Just no. don't raw dog. No. Neti pots, don't raw dog. Okay. Various uh, lettuces, you've got to wash those and yes. clean those because those can have salmonella on them. Tough. Don't raw chicken. Don't raw dog. You should, chicken. You should wash your meats before you cook Please. them. Wash and, and your all, fruits when you get them out of the grocery store. Always stores. wash yeah. your meats. Always wash your meats and wash your cucumbers as well and your eggplants. Be <clears> sure <throat> to wash all of your fruits and vegetables. Right. Please. Moving on from what a really nice. Riff. It was. It was a good message. CJ for president, as always. Uh, a couple last things from Memphis's 71 to 65 loss to Wichita State. Uh, one of the worst parts of the press conference was when Penny was asked what went wrong. And he was like, I don't know. Ask the players. And then the players were like, I don't know. <laughs> Not great. Not a great response. Uh, Penny did also say that he is working 20 hours a day. And, you know, I just want to I just want to say no one's working 20 hours. That would be 4 hours off. There are only 24 hours in a day. This is like the same thing of like I work 110%. No, there's only a 100% and none of us can give none of us can do that. That's physically impossible. And no one's asking anyone to work 100% or well, give your 100% effort when you are on the job, but there are always off hours. There's no way you're working 20 out of 24 hours I mean, a day. Listen, I, I would, I would argue, I would believe it. 
No. I would, I would I would believe it. The way that he's falling asleep coaching this team in game, I'd be like, yo, <laughs> yeah, maybe he is working 20 hours a day. <laughs> maybe. So you're counting the sleep. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe he's working 20 hours a day. That's why mm. defensively from time to time there are those mm. lapses. Maybe that's why offensively there are no plays. <laughs> There's zero there plays. There are no plays. There's no time for plays because the, the work has been the, the four extra hours. Well, he's, that's where the plays would be developed. Well, no, but he's you done, take some he's hours done 20 off. hours of work. He has plays in place. He's just in the game, and he's so sleepy from mm. 20 hours of work. That's just tough. forgets he's – brain fog is real. That's why you need a four-day work week. Brain, you got to have a Shout full. out Bernie Sanders. Shout out Bernie. Shout out Bernie. Uncle Bern. Make the people's coming president. Through. Hell, yeah, he is. Trying to help us out. Come but on, man. jokes aside, there is a large chorus of, well, what happens now – with Penny Hardaway. And there are some people who would say he should be fired and he would be fired if his name was not Penny Hardaway. Well, guess what? His name is Penny Hardaway. And he does have a unique connectivity to the city of Memphis. And I would say even if his name isn't Penny Hardaway, you're not going to fire a coach who made it to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournaments. One bad year following two tournament appearances one, that and followed a drought and won the conference tournament. And the conference tournament. Yeah. The trophy does exist. He posted the picture of it, and I know a lot of people laughed about it, but it is true. They won the AAC tournament last year. They've been to the big dance two years in a row. This year was awful. Like I said, a low point, the rock bottom. You're always going to give, maybe not always, but I would argue most of the time, a coach is going to be given an opportunity to fix what happened this year. To say, all right, this is your mulligan. How do you respond? And so just like I turned on my little seat heaters today because it was cold this morning when I got into my car, the seat heaters get turned on for Penny Hardaway. Absolutely. And there will be more critical conversations, especially locally, than perhaps there have been in past years. There has always been a cacophony of national voices who have tried to doom Penny Hardaway in Memphis before he even began. And this city protects its own. And there has been a lot of pushback. And then this year happens. And if this year happens again, there will be no choice but for the rallying cries to be, all right, there needs to be a change. I will always raise the question, okay, who do you want to be your head coach? <laughs> if not Penny Hardaway, who? And that is on a hiring committee, a search committee. It is not on Tiger Spaces on Twitter. But right now, that change isn't going to be made. Right now, all of the energy goes into... Penny Hardaway, off-season, building a team that is better than the one this year, learning from mistakes, having the humility to understand that it is on you that this season went the way it did. Yes, the players have their own respective fault in the season, but the coach builds the roster and the coach coaches the team. And there is responsibility there. So now you go build a team that maybe is a little more towards your identity. This team defensively made no sense based on what Penny Hardaway has been most good at in his coaching at Memphis so far, which hard-nosed defense, the offense has struggled year in, year out. And so you go get a bunch of guys who all want the ball in their hand, who might not try as hard on defense, who don't know how to cohesively come together as a team, who were available late in the transfer portal game for a reason maybe, and you do it differently this time around. As long as the fans don't go full apathetic, sure, right? Like people, I don't like the if it was if his name wasn't Penny, he'd be fired because Josh Pastner had a, a season like this and got another season afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. Josh Pastner goes on the run where he goes to the tournament a handful of years, doesn't get out of the first round, but he's in the in the tournament. One year he's not in the tournament, they allow him to come back, and then the second year was when the, the apathy levels just reached a, a point to where the Memphis Tigers basketball program was like, yo, we, we've got to try and find a way to move on and nudged him towards that Georgia Tech job. Tubby Smith, for all that the, the complaints were around Tubby Smith, it was the his undoing was people not showing up to FedEx form. Yes. Like, that's what did Tubby Smith in, was that. And I'm not sure if fans, the collective fans, of the Memphis Tigers men's basketball program are there yet. Like the last game, last home game of the season, Jacob, correct me if I'm wrong, was a great crowd. Right. Great crowd. So it is. The radio shows, the fans came back. Yeah. They were out at Brookhaven 
They yeah. were ready to ride with this team. And and so once they're quick forgiving fans. It's it's not yeah, all fans are. Sure. All, Jim Harbaugh should have been gone, right? You could you could have fired Jim Harbaugh and been justified in fired Jim Harbaugh. What does he do after the the low point? He beats Ohio State, wins the Big Ten, gets to the first mm-hmm. CFP uh, uh, for the, the Michigan Wolverines, right? And he's like, okay, all is forgiven. Give him the extension. Give him everything that he wants Give at this him point. Everything. everything. Yeah, fans are, are forgiven. Fans would have forgiven this season, the regular season, had they won the tournament, won the AAC, and then, like, won a game in, in the big dance or got to a Sweet 16 in the big dance. All fans want is their program to be successful. And if their program isn't successful, they want hope that in the near future, their program is going to be successful. That's how you stave off fan apathy. And as long as he can do that, he'll be Fine. Georgetown, right? Patrick Ewing, you could have made the argument that Patrick, they held on to him a year or two too long. Yeah. But it's when the fans just stop caring that you can't have as as a program. Vanderbilt fired Jerry Stockhouse. Fans had had stopped caring. Of course, fans stopped caring because you're putting out a bad product. But that's what it is. And so fans right now continue to, as long as they continue to buy season tickets, as long as they continue to show up to the games, he's not going to be gone this year. Now, midway through next year, if it is bad, and like bad, bad, not like hovering around 500, a game under 500 before mm. conference play, and then you drop the first two or three in conference play, like that might be the the nail in the coffin for him. But I, I am of the mind, you give him one. Everybody gets if you if you you go on a nice run and I think a NIT championship back to back March Madness appearances with a conference tournament win, I think that is a good enough run to buy you one of these. It's not good enough by much, but it's good enough to buy you one of these types of seasons where we talk about it being disappointing and it is. But yo, it's not like they they went out and won ten games. It's not like they went out and won twelve games. This is still a twenty plus win season for the Tigers there are some from name only interesting like good looking wins historically for the Memphis Tigers basketball program they'll Penny Hardaway will probably put if David Jones decides to leave he'll probably be able to say hey I put another dude into the NBA and David Jones so like there are some things that you can say all right the season was a big disappointment but there are a couple of positives to to look at here and again it's enough to buy him one more year Now, what that looks like next year, I'm not sure. And this goes to the hope standpoint for the Memphis Tigers. I'm not sure where the hope is right now. The hope was on that James Wiseman class. Like, oh, look, number one recruiting class in the nation. They were carrying unicorns down Union Avenue. Jalen Duren, right? Yes. Like, oh, number top five recruiting class in the nation. And and that energizes fans. I don't know where they are in the recruiting rankings right now. They, They built this thing off of transfers this year. I'm they're not gonna sure what to they're going to do next transfers year. Again. And young players, most likely. Bottom line is, I mean, the turnaround is going to be massive. Or the turnover, I should say, not the turnaround. We will see what it means for Memphis. Uh, just because the season's over, of course, there's still drama to be played out because we don't know what's going on with the Malcolm Dandridge situation either. It is worth noting that the last we heard was that school was investigating these claims and we haven't seen Malcolm Dandridge at the end of the season. And Malcolm Dandridge popped on Instagram after the Tigers lost yesterday and said, I hope them punks that wasn't letting me play satisfied. The truth will come out. A hundred emoji. Be careful who you allow yourself to be around. Them snakes will smile and say they love you and stab the poop emoji out of you. (laughs) Double exclamation points. I don't know what stabbing the poop emoji out of you quite means. I'm not going to investigate it. Who the hell is the punk? I know. That's my question. We have a mystery. Like, who... who, (laughs) I don't, I don't put shoes on people that don't fit, right? But if, if he's talking to me, like, and I'm, I'm a coach, assistant coach, whomever I might be. Uh, a teammate? Uh, uh, like, Malcolm and I got to talk. Well, he's like, done. We, we, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Regardless. No. I don't care. I don't care. And I'm saying talk because, like, you're peaceful. Like, I'm talking. It is I, talk, pacifist. Talk with our hands, not sign language, right? Like, we got to have one of those conversations. Mm-hmm. We can't be out here in these streets like this. It, it can't be this. 80th. 80th in recruiting rankings. So, again, <laughs> transfer portal. Let's go. We'll see how it plays out for the Tigers. Hey, the Grizzlies play this weekend. Yay! They play the Thunder tomorrow at FedEx Forum. But we haven't seen the injury report yet. 
Could Desmond Bain make his return this weekend? I do not know. I know he was doubtful on the last injury report. The way the tea leaves work, doubtful will turn into questionable. Questionable will turn into a maybe potentially game sign decision. It would be great if we saw Des, Jaron Jackson Jr., who's missed the last couple of games. We're looking for small bright spots with 15 games left in the Memphis Grizzlies season and only eight, eight home wins. I think they're eight and 35 at home. Eight and 35. No, not 8 and, eight and 25. Got to be 8 and 25. 35 would be too much. It's like a 22% winning percentage at home. I looked it up last night just because I wanted to know if it was as bad as it has felt. And yes, yes, it was. Around the NBA, though, we did have the Celtics become the first team to clinch a playoff spot at 52 and 14. Can't relate. They have made the playoffs 16 of the last 17 years. Beat the Suns last night by 15. And it was a really interesting game because by all means, it was the kind of game that the Celtics should have lost. Kristaps Porzingis didn't play. They didn't get to Phoenix until 5.30 in the morning, the day of the game. And they were playing three games in four nights to end a 10-game road trip. And they beat the Suns with their big three by 15. It is why the Celtics are in a tier above especially in the east but when you put them with the nuggets in the west the thunder who continue to try to prove that they are legit legit as the number one team in the west the timberwolves still trying to hang in there without carl anthony towns we are close we are less than a month away or about exactly a month away from the end of the regular season in the nba hey we got to take a quick break oh we'll hit a couple of the sports stories that we did not get to i have a couple big conference tournament games hold on a couple big conference tournament games that i'm looking forward to this weekend going into selection sunday i do have to say a prayer for justin herbert at some point because that is my brand and when the keenan allen news came out yesterday i was Hurt for Herbie, but maybe excited for another former USC quarterback. But we got to get to Dustin Starr because SmackDown Memphis is coming tonight. FedEx Forum, WWE SmackDown. I will be there as always. I am aloof when it comes to WWE happenings, but that's okay because Dustin Starr is going to join me in studio. Help preview tonight's big action here at FedEx Forum. The Rock, what will he do? Will he sing? Dustin Starr going to help me try to figure it out when we come back. Grizzlies fans, turn your stadium excitement into betting action at Southland Casino Hotel. As a proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies, Southland brings you more gaming action than ever before. Step onto our massive casino floor stretching more than two and a half football fields. Slot enthusiasts can enjoy more than 2,300 machines from penny slots to high limits and play the hottest games like Aristocrat, Dollar Storm, Cloverlink, and Lightning Cash. Table game aficionados can feel the thrill of the felt with 50 live table games. From three card to black Jack match, we're ready to deal you in. Plus, don't miss Stadium Gaming for an interactive digital experience. And for high rollers, our high limit room is calling your name. Go big on six high limit blackjack tables or spin one of our 54 high stakes slot machines. Throw in eight delicious dining options and a 300 room high rise hotel, and there's plenty to keep you going. At South Bend Casino Hotel, the gaming excitement never stops. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly. For help quitting, call 800 522 4700. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. Kayla sent in this picture, so we're gonna show you guys. I just wanna get your okay. initial thoughts. Oh, wow. If one of you walked in with this, who would you be least surprised wearing these boots? The least surprised word? Bennett. Bennett? No. 
Man, it definitely surprised for no. He's probably <laughs> seen somebody at a rock concert wearing something like this. Least surprised? <laughs> okay, I gotta go with the gang, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> the Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Jamarco Green, first team all sweat. Man, first man. team all untucked jersey, too. Bro, he's just, did you, who t- what team had you had to sweat the most? Jermichael KG? Green. KG's KG, up for sure. There. KG. We got, we got and, swe- and, swept in the first round and my by boy, And my boy Swamp Thing. Uh, who? 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 Big Perk. Oh, Big Perk. They yeah. sweat more than Jermichael? All right. Man, Bro. my boy sweating like a boy. Listen, <laughs> son of walking body. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Welcome back. It's an exciting night in Memphis. WWE Smackdown here at FedEx Forum. The Rock finally will be there. And Dustin Starr joins us now to help us get all pumped and prepped for it. Dustin, you're looking very dapper this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody's more excited about Smackdown tonight. The wrestling that's going on at FedEx Forum, not only tonight, but then also tomorrow. And finally, (laughs) The Rock has come back. Home. Did you hear him say that a couple weeks ago? Home. He said that uh, it's it was sold out in Dallas. It was sold out in Phoenix. And when I come home to Memphis, Mm. it's going to be sold out as well. And guess what? It is. It is. It is sold out. I need your prediction. And somebody in the chat I thought was perfect. They said the thunder last night because that thunder was wild. And we still have thunder this morning. A little less. I know the severity of the storms at least downtown has exited the equation. But the thunder's been around. And they said. It was The Rock it rolling home. Do you think he's going to be towards the beginning of the show, Dustin? Because here, here's the deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be straight with you. We're dog sitting. Okay. One of our dogs requires medication that is given at a specific time. Okay. So we're going to give the dog its meds and then sprint to FedEx Forum. Yes. But do we need to get there like right at 7? This is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. They always start the show with something awesome, yeah. right? So they have a, a lot of really good storylines. I think Rey Mysterio is going to return tonight yeah. in Memphis at SmackDown. Cody Rhodes is going to be there. The Rock's going to be there. You'd think that Roman Reigns is going to be there. We're only a couple of weeks away from WrestleMania, so it's going to be a really good show, okay? Okay. I think The Rock's probably going to be a little bit more towards the end because it's kind of like the main event type of stuff. That's but there's all like. sorts of rumors going around on the internet that maybe The Rock's going to sing tonight. I know. Because he likes to sing a little bit of Elvis. But then also on SmackDown last week, The Rock is a little bit long-winded. Mm-hmm. So they ran out of time. He got slapped by Cody and they went off the air and the stuff was still going. So maybe Ooh. they'll put The Rock on a little early so okay. so it doesn't... So, you know, they can get the whole thing in. So, I don't know. It's kind of a crapshoot. So, it just feels like a a massive show in general. Can you explain The Rock's singing to me? I am, as you know, uh, an amateur when it comes to my WWE fandom. this one's easy, Jessica. And I'm so excited to be continuing on in my my learning experience. But The Rock and singing. Why does he sing? So, back in the Attitude Era days, and this is where CJ really watched... We talk about it all the time, but, you know, back when Rikishi was giving stink faces. Oh, and stink face. <laughs> oh. I have to throw that in there just for CJ. But I love the stink face. You know, my, my life dream is to be given a stink face by Rikishi. Oh to be in gosh. the ring and catch a stink face. Do you know what that is, by the way? That's no. a whole side conversation. We'll have that one later. But, but back then, The Rock would, would take center stage in the ring, and he would have a guitar and a microphone okay. and a spotlight. Okay. And this is a professional wrestler. Again, this is before he was like a movie star and doing all this other stuff. And he would perform songs and sing, and they were really good. And so people have been clamoring about mm. the return of Hollywood rock. Is he going to perform? And, of course, being in Memphis and him starting his right. career in Memphis and saying that he's coming home, you would have to think he's going to do something to, like, pay tribute to Elvis. Mm. And I think that it might be tonight. There's, now, I'm saying the rumors are spreading on the Internet at this point, so anything can happen. But it would be kind of cool to see 
and the, the rock the good thing, if I remember correctly, the good things about the songs, the reason everybody loved them, was because they were so mean spirited. Like he's he's insulting yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of he's course. insulting his peers. He's insulting you as the fan. Like we, the the hill that he was was fantastic. He was so good, Jessica. That SmackDown, that's his thing. That's his thing. That's his thing. Mm. They he was, took his slogan and yep. made it a a WWE or WWF yeah. like thing weekly mm -hmm. because he made layeth the smacketh downeth on your Rudy who candy ass your Jabron like he's one of the great one of the great promos. Very good point, the Rock. CJ. He is exactly right. He would talk so much trash. He being the Rock that he would say that he's gonna lay the SmackDown on your Rudy Poo. There you go. I didn't know if I could say it or not, but oh, they literally can. took his <laughs> slowing, his slogan and his catchphrase, and they turned it into a television show called SmackDown. So he says it's the Rock Show, and the Rock Show is coming to the Rock's hometown of Memphis tonight. It's going to be awesome. What wrestling people in the chat want to yes. know why I would like to take a, a stink face? Because that's one of the more it's pretty I, gross. It's one of the most iconic moves, though, isn't it? Yes. Like, is, is there what wrestling move would you most want to take, Jessica? Oh God! I, I don't think know you should probably tell her question. what the stink face well, 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 is first. Okay, so here's. Well, I'm gonna assume <laughs> so it has something you can to do, do with a booty in the face. Yes, yes. a big booty. He, take, mm -hmm. he takes a running start and just oh, rubs his. In, in the face. And Rakishi is a sumo wrestler. Yeah, <laughs> like he's that size. Mm. He's got like a thong on. Yes, and, and oh. got the he sumo attire on. on. He gets in deep. You know what I'm saying? So you can take that, or you can take a Bronco Buster, which is X Pac running and jumping into your neck on the front and just rodeo cowboying that thing mm. on you. So CJ, That's another Jessica, good move. I, um, I might get in trouble for saying this, but my Maria has taken both of those moves. No! Yeah. No. Yeah. No! And it was, it was my fault, of course, according to Maria, but yeah. With you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So you allowed her to get a stink face and a Bronco Buster and she stayed. Allowed? What do you mean? I was incapacitated. How These are, are you wow. You got to be better at your job. <laughs> you can't be getting incapacitated with those well, two maniacs but running that's around. True, that's true love that you guys yes. made it through. You know, marriages have their their hurdles. <laughs> and that sounds like one that you when made it through. When I was an through. active competitor in the ring, yes. my Maria would do anything to have my back. And sometimes it would mean stepping up to Rikishi or X-Pac. And, you know, things might not quite <laughs> go her way. <laughs> You can't bring her to the ring when that okay, stuff is I just, possible. This is, you know, as Boy. mentioned, I don't know everything, right? So I just Googled most famous wrestling moves of all time. What's Ooh. the tombstone pile diver? Oh, wow. That's pile the, driver? The pile Undertaker, driver. The tombstone. Oh. Oh, that's, yeah. He flips you. He picks you oh, well, up. Well, on that one. Well, he Maybe flips not. you around. So your feet are in the air. Your legs are between his legs. And he just drops you on your neck. Oh, and this move is actually banned in some wrestling organizations due to the potential for serious yeah, because yeah. they're not as okay. strong as he is. A lot okay. of the pile drivers have been banned because you land directly on your head. And oh, WWE that is rough. such big business. If you get hurt on Monday and you're supposed to wrestle on SmackDown on Friday, we got a little bit of a problem. So they had to be a little bit safer here. How about the Stone Cold Stunner? I assume it's Stone Cold Stephen oh, yeah, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> Look at CJ, me go. come show her. Stand oh, up. he's gonna do it! Stand up! <laughs> Here we go! Stand up. Live demonstration. Be careful of my You're on the Jessica Benson show. So, Stone yeah, yeah. Cold yeah. Stunner. So you're gonna kick me in the stomach. You're gonna turn and you're gonna jump and you're gonna Boom. bring my head down onto your shoulder. Uh -huh. Kick you in the stomach. Kick me in the stomach. Mm. I'll be you gotta in. take an outlandish bump too. Turn. There we go. Turn. It's like a jawbreaker. <gasps> Boom! Stone Cold Stunner. Stone Cold. Stunner. Okay. Stone cold. Oh. Stone Cold oh. Stunner! Oh. Down goes CJ! Down oh. goes CJ! <laughs> we are getting ready in All here, right. folks. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I saw on the internet, obviously a lot of things going on, rumors <laughs> galore. Do you think Jerry the King Lawler shows up tonight? I think Jerry the King Lawler will show up tonight. I actually think that Jerry the King Lawler will show up on Saturday night as well because okay. it's wrestling night at the Forum, and I can't imagine that even if he's not on camera, I can't imagine him not being in the house for that. Okay. Same thing with SmackDown, them being in town. He's been with them so long, I'd imagine he'd be there saying hello to all of his friends and everything and maybe come out and wave to the crowd. But, um, yeah, so tonight, SmackDown. Tomorrow is wrestling night at FedEx Forum for the Memphis Grizzlies. There's going to be plaza matches taking place from Memphis Wrestling at 4.30 to 5.30. Of course, we're giving away 5,000 luchador masks. Okay. 
and you've got one here. I have one. I just pulled it out of my backpack. These I are tried to put this super on yesterday. Cool. It didn't go very well. And they're super cool because Rey Mysterio is making his long-anticipated return tonight Hello, on SmackDown. Everyone. First 5,000 fans get a Lucha Libre mask on Saturday. Also, pregame matches on the uh, pregame with Casamigos, which will be about 6, 6.15 p.m. And then, of course, wrestling Model. theme all throughout with a big showdown happening at halftime. So two awesome days of, of wrestling here at FedEx Forum. Mm -hmm. Big time for wrestling. I can't take myself seriously. This is this really mask. good. That's a good mask. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Hit me with the rock box. Hold on. Oh, we'll do it at the we end. Go. We'll do it at the end because we're on a tight schedule because we do have to get bottom. to our another special guest on today's show. We're having 191 Collapse Alexis I should have worn my referee shirt. You should have. And then we could have done Man. a full, maybe this summer we do a full GCM we'll do like a, um, wrestling special. It's not a scrimmage. It's like an exhibition. And I, yes. How about that? I love that. Great idea. <laughs> okay. Outside of the rock because like you said, so many exciting matchups. What are your... What's your top three things that you're looking for outside of The Rock tonight at WWE SmackDown? Well, of course, The Rock is number one, first and foremost. Logan Paul. Logan Paul is the United States champion. He oh. is a big deal. Everybody knows who he is. Prime is actually going to have a logo in the center of the mat at WrestleMania. So there's no telling what Logan Paul is going to do. I would say Cody's going to be in the house. Cody is the biggest superstar in WWE right now. If you drive around back and you look at the trucks, his face is all over them. Cody slapped The Rock last week on SmackDown, so there is no telling what's going to happen. And then also, of course, the return of Rey Mysterio, who was out with an injury. He's going to be back on SmackDown, which makes me think that something big is going to happen with his return because WrestleMania is a couple of weeks away and they're still building these storylines. And, and that's the main thing. So even if the top three that I just said, you know, may, maybe they happen, maybe they don't. But WWE is on the road to WrestleMania only a couple of weeks away, and it's WrestleMania 40. They say it's the biggest WrestleMania of all time, so the show is going to be good. Okay. Now, it, if yes. you're not a wrestling fan, yes. pyro, fireworks, production, the stage, singing. the fans, <laughs> the singing, there is no, so serious. much there. The thing that stood out when Raw was here, because that was my first WWE live event, and frankly, I think it was absolutely the first time I've watched one all the way through. I'm sure I have seen... Highlights. Wrestling just wasn't. A part. I grew up right, in Colorado. Right. Watched a lot of sports. Wrestling just wasn't in our family's wheelhouse. Going to that event made me wish that it had been because I wish that I was. I, I was baptized by it, you know, to a certain degree. And it was the theater of it for someone who loves theater. And now we can have musical right. theater into the mix as well. Uh, but it really is a show, and all the drama and the spectacle of it, like. I wish I was a kid again so that I could experience WWE through a child's eyes because I cannot imagine like, how mystified young people are going to their first WWE. Oh, man. I have a three-year-old, Reese yeah. the Beast, and he'll tell <laughs> you my name beast. is Reese the Beast. So he is was, that his wrestling name officially? Yes, that is, a fi that is his name if you ask him. Uh, just watching him because, you know, he watches Memphis Wrestling and he goes and plays in the ring at the Wrestle Center and stuff when he's there with me. But then you take it and you magnify it times a million the size of mm. WWE and just how bright and shiny, like a little kid just watching it, like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm seeing, but this is really, really cool. So my niece went to her first WWE event, um, I think it was last year, okay. and uh, she was kind of comparing, because all she knew was Memphis Wrestling, which she loves, by the way, but it was like, whoa, this thing is a, like a, on a whole nother level. So she was just taken back yeah. so yeah when you see it the first time or when you see kids they really get into it so i'm sure reese the beast will have his wwe championship with him will roman reigns be there i, I can't imagine roman not being there if okay. the rock's gonna be there I, I think the entire bloodline will be there now i have heard people say well roman's not been advertised we've been advertising the rock mm -hmm. but i believe that roman will be there okay any other special guests that you could think of who might be obviously not holding you to um, it but Main event, Jey Uso. He's got okay. this thing. Yeet! Yeet! You know about Yeet? Yeet! Yeet. And the whole crowd the entire time. Oh. Just wait. The whole crowd. Really? He's brought Yeet back? Will be bouncing. When was Yeet crazy. a thing? I don't know. I feel like it was a couple years. I feel like it was like, like pre-pandemic where ago. I was like yeah. running around being like, Yeet! With the Yeet! yeet. So 2013, Jacob is saying. 2013, okay. That he makes sense. He started saying Yeet. The fans started saying Yeet back to him. Apparently, somebody else had this thing trademarked, so they thought that he wouldn't be able to use it. And then I guess WWE bought it. So it's all over his glasses, <laughs> his T-shirt. The fans chant it. Like, literally, if he says, Memphis, Tennessee, they'll go, yeet, yeet. after every word. Almost like, what? What? Oh, oh, it's yeet. yeet. Yes. Okay. It's pretty cool, though. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm going to say every time I see you, yeet. Yeet. 
But also, thank you. And I cannot wait. Where can people find you tonight? I know well, you guys have a pre pre event thing. Yeah, right? we're gonna pre party right down the street at Kooky Canuck at four o'clock. So okay. four to about six thirty. It's a very short walk to FedEx Forum. So we're gonna go over there, have some drinks and some food, family friendly, bring the kids, and then we'll all walk over to FedEx Forum together. That starts at four o'clock. They want you in the building at FedEx Forum at six fifteen because they go. No, so I'm sorry, six forty five. Okay. I was thinking fifteen minutes early. Okay. Six forty five because they they go live. Okay. And this thing is gonna be big. Like they've getting been getting over two million people watching. Every I'm gonna try Friday. to be in the building by 6:50. Oh, that'd be good. That's my goal. 6:50 is good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm putting absolutely. my one up. Devin Walker told me to put my one up. Devin will be there. He's, of course he will. There's no telling what he's going to be wearing too. <laughs> I'm acknowledging. I can't say it. I can't do it. <laughs> but, Acknowledge your tribal chief. <laughs> uh, one's in the air. All right, Dustin. Thank you as always for getting us as ready as we could be for a WWE event here in Memphis. WWE awesome. SmackDown. I know everyone will be so sad to not have those ads anymore. So for one last time, <laughs> Memphis! Where are you at? Where are you at? And no, it was not me. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, Alexis Miche is going to join us. She is the latest designer for this weekend's 191 collabs. Her Childlike Faith collection is incredible. I cannot wait for you to see it and to talk a little bit about her, about the inspiration behind this latest collection. We'll get to her on the other side. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Anticipate each challenge, make a quick response, capitalize on every opportunity, and win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com slash students. Welcome back. A big thanks to Dustin Starr for coming in studio today. A busy Friday on the show as our next guest joins us. We have another 191 collab coming up this weekend when the Grizzlies take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. It is Alexis Mache. Yes. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Good. You have been all over Grind City Media this week and all over Memphis getting ready for this collection. How's it going? It's going good. Yeah. It's been 
exhausting but <laughs> exciting so yeah exhausting but, and rewarding i'm yeah, sure yeah, and yeah. having this collection come to life i know people may have seen you explain it on other shows but mm -hmm. for our audience tell us a little bit about the inspo behind this the childlike faith yeah. collection so the whole inspo came from obviously i've been doing art ever since i could pick up a crayon and uh, I have just been on this journey ever since I was a kid um, and doing it full time now is like a dream come true. So I, through this collection, I want to awaken the inner child in everybody. Like we all have something we wanted to be when we grew up, you know, and I want us to tap into that and walk in our purpose and, you know, do good for the world. So I'm going to ask you a random question because oh, like, Lord. well, your colors are within this collection so fun, right? They're mm -hmm. bright, they're vibrant, and you said ever since you picked up a crayon. So when mm -hmm. you were a kid, what was your favorite color? Like what was your the number one Ooh. crayon that you took out of the box when oh you were trying gosh, to that's, color something? That's so funny. Um, uh, I don't remember, but I did grow up liking purple for a while. Okay. And then I switched over to blue. So teal is my favorite color now. <laughs> yeah, well, I see the teal right yes. there on the yeah. fanny pack. I know they were trying to tell you on, I think, I think it was on Sneak Fest, with the mm -hmm. orange, because you went to uh, UT. Yeah. So you're trying to make mm -hmm. all the people in Memphis here wear a little extra orange. I just think orange is a hot color right now. We're going <laughs> to spring outside of today's gloomy mm -hmm. weather. Like, we've had the sunshine. And yeah. this makes me feel like a summer party. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Like I told them, I've been drawn to orange lately. God. Like I got orange seats put in my new Jeep. So I'm like, Ooh. orange is just, it, it just energizes me. I've always been a fan of bright colors. So yeah. I, I love this. I think when I was a kid, I went through this period where I was obsessed with like lime green yeah. and hot pink. Not pink, yeah. but specifically like a neon pink. Yes, yeah. there's the there's lime. lime you have some hot pink on the shirt even. Yeah. I had my room colors were that. I once broke my wrist and I had a full arm cast that was striped in those colors, which yes. matched nothing, but right. certainly was a statement. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the pieces itself because we have bags, multiple. Yeah. I know you have the fanny pack here. There's a tote bag as well. Well, yeah. You have a shirt, a hoodie. Do you have a favorite of all of them? Ooh. Is that like asking you to pick a favorite child? That's hard. Yeah, it really is. Um, I love the hoodie. The Ooh, hoodie. I love the hoodie. I have worn it every day this week, even though it's <laughs> hot outside. Yeah, um, that's it. I love the belt bag. Like, this is something I could wear all day, every day. I wish we didn't have the clear bag policy so I could wear it to the games, mm -hmm. but that's why I made the straps detachable so you can put the strap on your um clear bag for perfect we love the versatility yeah. what does the strap say memphis it's memphis memphis memphis, 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 memphis. perfect yeah Indian. are there any other small details that stand out to you that are kind of like things that you know that you would have to know to know um the actual childlike faith writing is a modified version of my five-year-old nephew's handwriting so oh, that's, that's so like really nice. special to me really fun including him in this um the little grizz logo that i illustrated yes. a couple years ago um that's like my my signature style but like memphis like i don't know yeah. it's just it's something fun and that's been close to me for a long time so um other than that, I mean, you'll see the crown a lot of places, too. And that's like being crowned by God and being in your true self and owning it. Like, yeah. How, how did they approach you, the Grizzlies, about doing this collab? And what was your thoughts when they did come to you and say, hey, we'd like to use you as one of our 191 collabs this year? That was very interesting because I wasn't expecting it. Um, I made those John Morant is a Prey Inside My City t-shirts and I sent it to Molly Wexler, which is Jason Wexler's wife. And he saw it and he was like, hey, do you want to do a line? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> of course, <laughs> sure. So. So what, Here we are. What, what is the hope that this line does for you? Because it's great to get the exposure, but the exposure mm -hmm. comes for like one night. What do you hope that this line does for you professionally going forward? Um, going forward, I really want this to be a global movement. Like, I would love to see like Nike or the NBA pick this up, like even 
Louis Vuitton. Like, I would love to see the childlike faith go and just impact so many lives across the world. Have you had anybody else? I would also like, like to see it go to Nike yeah. and Louis Vuitton. How, do, how does that exactly. work? Like, when you move on from this as a designer, because, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure a lot of the job is just trying to sell your stuff and right. get new eyes on your stuff. So how mm -hmm. how does that work uh, I'm still figuring, still it, figuring out. it out yourself. <laughs> I have no idea. I have my childlike faith that God will help me get there. I love that. But I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a great start, obviously. If you could collab with anyone from a design standpoint, are there like dream designers that you would like to work with or dream celebrities, I'll say, too, Ooh, who would wear your stuff? That is a tough question. Um, Like I said, Louis Vuitton, I would really like to work with Pharrell because, you know, he's their new creative director. Um, and then seeing Virgil work through them, and I think that would be fun. Um, and other people, Beyonce, mm. like, that would be amazing. That'd be very like, fun. Beyonce was a kid once. Like, she that's was. That's crazy to think about. So that would be fun. Just <laughs> 16 yeah. carriages since like she's yes. been you know having to work I for such a long song. time i do too yes. i'm obsessed with that yes. song i cannot yeah. wait for that entire album yeah. but like everyone was a child at some point everyone yeah. had a crayon everybody mm -hmm. was trying to figure out what they wanted to do with their life so it's yeah. a very relatable line yeah. and i love it Thank um you. i cannot wait to get i can't buy all of it but i'm gonna buy something because <laughs> yes. this is such a good one where can people find your work outside of this collection where can they find you um, if you they want one of those john morant shirts maybe from a few years mm -hmm. ago or anything else that you make um they can go to my website which is www.alexismache.com a-l-e-x-i-s-m-i-c-h-e um there's a little button there where you can click shop <laughs> go there Perfect. um i also have three pieces that are going to be at the game tomorrow so look out for those original art pieces that are inspired by the collection um and i am in the process of getting my studio together to where people can actually come and buy things there where's the studio it's at martial arts gallery where i had the preview party excellent yeah well alexis we are so excited for you and everybody get your tickets Tomorrow, you can only get these items at FedEx Forum. So you have to come to the Grizzlies Thunder game to be a part of this 191 collab. Alexis Mache, the Child Life Faith Collection. Thanks for coming in studio. Thank you. We'll take a quick break here. When we come back, it is Music Friday. I spent all morning listening to two new albums, the Justin Timberlake album and the Casey Musgraves album. We will give our official reviews when we come back, some other music stories. And the weekend, we are so close. We'll be right back. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Anticipate each challenge. Make a quick response. Capitalize on every opportunity. 
and win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com slash students. didn't count me in oh and so we were silent for like a second you know your shirt is like really perfect for the childlike faith collection yeah that I was what I, about design. yeah i love calvin and hobbs they're the homies my one of my favorite comic uh strips calvin and hobbs not one of my favorite the comic favorite. strip comic strip excuse me calvin and hobbs i liked the peanuts they were when good when i was a kid they were good what's garfield what's, garfield is a great one uh who's the chick who always goes at Mm. She's she's fighting her obsession with food, but always eats the food. Ack. Yeah, and then she always Ack. ends with an act. <laughs> she was she was great. Boondocks, um, really good comic strip. Was it Kathy? Ah, uh, yep. Is that it was right? Ka- I think it was Kathy. It was something like that, either Catherine or Kathy. I'll tell you what didn't make me go act. Well. One thing, because 82 Atlantic has brought it up in the chat. Yes, I did see that Boogie Ellis's career at USC came to an end yesterday. We don't have to talk about USC getting absolutely eviscerated by Arizona, as I predicted in the Pac-12 tournament. And by eviscerated, I mean they lost by like 30 points. They still think that Bronny James is going to go into the draft. Good luck to him. Best of luck in your endeavors. My USC group chat said, does Bronny Sr. have any eligibility left? Because we could use help. <laughs> Sincere and total help in the, not the Pac-12, because now USC men's basketball has to play in the Big Ten, too. We have focused all this on football. USC men's basketball is about to be the worst team. In the, who's the worst team in the Big Ten? Michigan? What, what are you talking about? No. Well, I mean, but like Michigan has had <laughs> his, its moments. His, historically, who's been bad teams in the Big Ten historically um, from the original members, yes. Northwestern, oh, from okay. from the the not so original original members, Penn State has been bad, mm-hmm. and then from the newer members, Nebraska has been a bleep show. Well, now you can add the Rutgers in there also. I think Nebraska as well. might make the tournament. Uh, this 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 has got to be their first time making the tournament since joining the Big Ten. Nebraska. I say that I, with, I, they're I, a lock. I don't think they'll make the tournament. They are a lock to make the tournament. I say that with no knowledge of okay. Nebraska basketball past this year, but I'm I'm pretty sure this will be their first time in the in the Big Dance since they joined the Big Ten. <laughs> Kelsey said she's watching us through the glass, but I don't see her through the glass, so she's a liar. We have to talk about the All music right. of the day. Justin Timberlake, the stacked harmonies are back. I have not felt this kind of reaction to a Justin Timberlake album since I listened to 2020 Experience for the first time. I put on the first song, and I have to be honest, the first song might be my least favorite song of the entire album, and it is called Memphis, and I know no one in Memphis will be shocked to know that Justin Timberlake's song called Memphis never actually says the word Memphis in the entirety of the song. It's fine, but it goes straight from Memphis into what I think is one of Justin Timberlake's best songs of all time. F up the disco. Whoa. F up the disco. There she is. <laughs> there she is. Kelsey Wright Johnson. She's wearing a shirt with her on. Oh my God. That is a iconic shirt for Kelsey Wright Johnson. It is the picture of. Move, Are you. Kelsey. Do a thumbs up. Can you hear us? Move. Never mind. She can't hear. She's wearing a shirt of the picture that went hella viral of her and Jaw, and everyone knows what I'm talking about. If you follow the Grizzlies, if you know, way. you know. She Step has had that way. made. Turn. Stay. No, your front. There. Yeah. Okay, can we Slide stay it? this way a little bit. A little bit more. Directions. A little bit more. No, up. Stand up. Slide this way. 
<sighs> you can't see it. It's too dark. It's too dark. It's too dark. It's not going to work. Anyway, it's a great shirt. I hope she wears it. She's guest hosting the Gary Paris show coming up next. I will be on that as well. So we'll talk to Kelsey then. Back to the important thing of F up the disco. CJ, that song is going to get me through this rainy day. It's going to get me through the summer. It's going to get me through bad days. It's going to get me through long drives. I love that song. And from that song, going into Angel, those are back to, or no Angel, excuse me, back to back bops. F up the disco is a top five Justin Timberlake song all time. And I'm including the stuff he did with NSYNC. Like, F up the disco so is, that's, that's, that, that gets the blood flowing in a really fun way. Uh, what was the, the now, now I have to look, do you have the tracks? I sure do. Uh, what's track like 10, 11, 12? What's that? Well, it's the, so the one that he's on with Tobey. Oh, wait. Tobey, um, Nuigwe. Nuigwe. That is great. It's Sanctified. It goes Liar, Infinity Sex, Love and War, Sanctified. That's a run. Then we have Drown, which has been out for weeks that apparently you and other Jacobs somehow were yeah, under we a rock and had not heard. I love that song. That's what, that's what gave me hope that this album was going to be great. Track four. What's track, track four? Track four is Play. I didn't like Play. What's the one before Play? No Angels. No Angels is great. No Angels has one of my new favorite lines. You're looking like gas and I'm looking for mileage. Oh, you're looking like gas and I'm looking for mileage. Ooh. One of these songs made me immediately want to turn around and go back to the comfort of my home and spend some time with a loved one this morning. Mm. This is just, th this one? is peak Justin. Um, what lovers do. Technicolor. What lovers do? I liked Technicolor. Technicolor I like is what I was thinking of. Paradise featuring NSYNC. I hadn't, I hadn't gotten that far yet. It's a nice slow, slow song. Okay. Slower song. Is it? Is it like? Uh, it kind of reminds me of God. Yes. Okay. Like a like a mesh of Gone and God must have spent a little more time on you. Got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. I'm so into it. Yes, yeah, this, this is a good. And good album. from a like intrigue factor, the album's good. Stamp whatever. From a pop culture intrigue factor, Jessica Biel has been with him every step of the way. One of the hottest pop culture um, predictions for this year was would Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel still be married at the end of this year? And if the PR rollout for this album has anything to say about it, the answer is yes. Yes, they have made it through the rocky waters. What, what was going on with them? Oh, a lot of cheating and suspected cheating. And oh, okay. Well. Justin being photographed, like maybe, maybe not kissing some other woman on a balcony in New Orleans once oh, upon a time. That was, was, uh, that was definitely that photoshopped, was just like the royal family. That was photoshopped. Um, but she's with him at the restaurant. She's posting photos well, she, of him for, on for Instagram. Her, for her livelihood, she has yes. to have this album do well so that if she does leave him, the alimony check is a little bit larger. Sure. Yeah. She has her career, too. What's the last thing Jessica Alba has done? It's not Jessica Alba. Get her, Jessica Biel. Yeah, what's, what's the last thing Jessica Biel has done? Um, Blade she 3? Was in a, no, she was in a TV show. What TV show? The Center? Seventh Heaven? No, oh. a newer TV show. Oh, okay. I mean, she was technically in Seventh Heaven. Technically. She was in, it was called Candy. It was a miniseries that I never watched. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she was in Pete the Cat. Okay. She was, in, she was a voice in Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. Oh, really? She was also in Pete the Cat, A Very Groovy <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> She's been doing some voiceovers. She, her voice was okay. used in BoJack Horseman. Okay. And then The Sinner was her last. She was in eight episodes of The Sinner in 2017. Okay. Jacob wants to point out that she was in a full season of BoJack. There you go. All right. Good for Jessica Biel. <laughs> she hasn't been in a movie. Well, she in wasn't a movie star, time. was she? How many movies has she no, done? No, she was in I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry. Yeah. She was in those movies. Remember like when they did the holiday movies? So there was Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. And then there was those big New Year's Eve. Those big ensemble. Yeah, the big multi-story yeah, yeah, yeah. ensemble. Um, she was in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot in 2003. I remember that. That was like when she was. Yeah, she she was about to take off. And then mm -hmm. she was in Blade the, the next year, right? 04, 05? Something like that. Yes, Blade, Blade, Blade Trinity in 04. Mm-hmm. And Elizabeth Town, I forgot that movie exists. Oh my God! The Illusionist, but obviously she's most known for playing Mary Camden in Seventh Heaven, one of the worst aging shows to ever exist. I assume you watched no Seventh Heaven growing up. I believe it or not. I'm sorry. When you I, assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Well, it wasn't by choice. My brother was in the Seventh Heaven, and we shared a TV, and so he would uh, watch Seventh Heaven. He loved him some Seventh Heaven, and we loved to make fun of him for, for watching Seventh, Seventh Heaven. Heaven. 
Oh boy. If they take away TikTok, how will I be able to watch old scenes of Seventh Heaven and cringe my face Why off? would you want to watch old because Seventh they're Heaven? They're so scenes. funny. They're so bad. And like the dad the ended up being how about an that? actual bad person. Yes. Him, Cosby, sure. and Al Bundy, right? Yeah. All TV dads. All well known, prominent yes. TV dads. And the best one in real life was Al Bundy. <laughs> I thought Seventh Heaven was one of the greatest shows. Like as a kid, you really? watch it all the time. Oh no, I knew well, that. Because that it was, was on some dumb shit. Um, ABC what was Family. It called? Yeah, ABC it, Family. It was, ABC it, was, family. it was Fox Family, and then it was Fox ABC Family. family. And then ABC Family. And it was always on around uh, Step by Step and Great Facts TV of show. Life Great reruns TV show. and the Mary Kate and Ashley show. I think it was there was two. One was It Takes No, It Takes Two is the movie. Yeah. Too little time, so little time, so much to do. Wow, that came back fast. Anyway, everything in Seventh Heaven ended up just being like could, well, it Christianity propaganda. Yeah, like <laughs> like it was so I, bad. I can't believe people didn't think that because that's that's what I thought we when I was it, watching it. I was we were inundated like, with ridiculous. content like that. It was like, oh, this is totally normal. This is ridiculous nonsense. This is stupid. Everybody in this family is stupid. Why are they trying to force this way of thinking down my throat? Speaking Black. of forcing things down my throat. Oh, wait, never mind. That was a bad transition. That was a really bad transition. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, what am I supposed I don't to know. do? I don't, that was... That, that. <laughs> like, yo... Oh, I'm crying. Yes, you, as well you should. Shame on you. Shame on me. Put me in the cancellation <laughs> part of the show today. Oh, my gosh. Controversy. We need the controversy stamp. Woo. Controversy. Did we show the picture of Justin Timberlake that Jessica Biel posted on Instagram? And that's where you I went? Meant, I meant it and from that's a, where you went? I meant it from a this picture, you, you were thinking of this picture and your immediate reaction was speaking of shoving thirsty. things down my throat? I mean, that's where you went? So Are you? Oh my goodness. Please don't make me cry. It's a Friday. Yo! Although, I like, was gonna although, say, although, like, I get it. Like, throw the picture back up. Well, I, I completely get it. Like, a whole actually, hot damn. What I was actually going to say is, I saw somebody on Twitter say, at a certain age, you should not be making this face anymore. And Justin Timberlake might be at that age. But you have to get past the... Who's looking at his face? <laughs> to get to the face. I didn't know so. he had a face in that picture. Throw it back I up. Understand. I want to see his face. <laughs> <laughs> Put the picture back up. Oh, I'm gonna cry. I like, mean, I have loved this. At, I have been in love he's with this the, man since I was eight years old. He's like, got the come V. On. He's got the V, doesn't he? It's not really a V. It's more like a wave. It's like more like a wave runner. Well, no, but but like we can't. Yeah, I would we assume. I would assume it. if the jeans like, were, we drop the jeans were an just inch a little lower, bit, <laughs> yes. we would see a V. Oh, he's wearing a necklace. Please also. stop objectifying our coworker Justin Timberlake. <laughs> oh, is he still a bar owner? <laughs> <laughs> I swear, if Justin Timberlake walked in this building one day to like reprimand us for this, sh I'd be like, "Take me now." <laughs> <laughs> the last, well, I did, we did all of that, and I still hadn't seen the face. Show me the face. <laughs> it's weird. It's like the weird, like. <laughs> uh, why are we doing this? LeBron like did this after dropping forty thousand, right? Like, I don't understand why we're why we're doing this. Like he was like, "This is my Memphis face." <laughs> Is that what he was like? <laughs> and then there was nothing else Memphis I, about. I keep, <laughs> I've glanced at the face and I keep going right back to those abs. It's like, uh, okay, Justin, I see you. I see you. I support that. Do you think he was sad about the Tigers? <laughs> with those abs? Probably not. Probably not. With that bank account, with this album, Probably with the upcoming not. tour. He just did the live show in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and NSYNC mm -hmm. showed up. JC is still really singing from the heart. If you watch JC in an NSYNC performance, that man has wanted to be. What? No. <laughs> Excuse he's, me? Is he? Oh. He's booing the the shoving things down. We're throats. a little late for that, Jacob. Well, it's been a while since we did that. We've, we've moved on. We've, we've completely stopped doing double tap, by the way. I know. I meant to talk to us about that. <laughs> so he had to go and find it. Jacob, show the the B-roll of NSYNC reunion, please. Like, that was fun. <laughs> um, that was fun to see. And like was. you said, oh my God. JC, Justin forgot where he was supposed to go on stage. Like, like he and, can. He, and, he, and he realizes it right here. He's like, oh, I need to get over here to this speaker. There it is. Look at that. They're having fun. 
and, and looking at Justin in that fit, I would not have uh, thought he'd have abs like that. Right? Like, Justin with the, he's been in his baggy boy era, and it, it does not scream, oh, I've got the V. Right? Because you, you would want to show that off, wouldn't right. you? Cause ladies yeah, like but you he's very much in his baggy clothes with his like cool sneaks and chain era. Okay. And then it's just a nice little surprise when he goes into his wife beater and it's like, look at this. I still got it. I still got it. I don't think I can recover. <laughs> don't worry, I cut him, I cut him off. CJ hey, just Give me the his... camera. Give me the camera, What's Jacob. What's the opposite of a V? A U. A U. <laughs> a W. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you got it. Yes, CJ. Yeah. Yes. There's for some reason your wife. <laughs> for some reason your wife is not pulling a Jessica Biel because Jessica Biel posted these. I'm like, he'll never post these, so I'll post them. You're welcome, everyone. Why are you thirst trapping your husband? Should I thirst trap Chris more? To get money? Yes. If, you, if, if pimp him out, if it'll make you guys money, absolutely. The reason my wife doesn't post me is because my fugly fat ass won't make her no money. I'm crying. I thought my mom was just, my mom's up for some reason okay. early. She never watches live. And she just texted me and I thought she was going to say, like, too far, Jessica. And instead, it's just another Kate Middleton theory. <laughs> what is the next Kate Middleton theory? It's the one theory? I sent you yesterday okay. about Rose Hanbury's husband Being... potentially okay. having a male lover. Okay. And she's just a beard. And so okay. they were never in a loving relationship. So that's an open anyway, relationship. Anyway, this a, is all according loving, to the internet. Let's be perfectly clear. It's a loving relationship. It's a loving, open <laughs> relationship where both of them are like, hey, oh, hell physically yeah. go get what you Before need to I get. Before I met Chris Luther, I was going to marry my gay best friend. He was going to be president and I was going to be first lady. Oh, turn up we could still make it work yes thruple style no that's not thruple style that's just like well, no, I'm, I'm friendship saying... style where you like love that person to death and could be their friend for life and you could be married because in that situation if he was gonna be president probably needed a wife and i was willing to accept that duty um but then i met chris and that all fell apart i'm saying bring him into the relationship now oh no no he's just my pal okay all right that's Please. unfortunate he'll never be president then i know um he doesn't it, want to now wasn't that the underwoods isn't that House yes. of Cards? Yes. Yeah. We don't talk about House of Cards. <laughs> oh. The first couple seasons of House of Cards were awesome. Like first three or four? Awesome. What, they should have ended it when Frank finally became president. After he became president, yes. like it, none of that matters. But the, he's standing at the, the desk, at the presidential desk in the Oval Office, and with the ring, the two knocks, the boom, boom. Just end it right there and don't bring it back. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, one of, other thing on the update of... <laughs> Kate Middleton. Did you see that Meghan Markle returned to Instagram yesterday? No. Meghan Markle has been off Instagram. Okay. And yesterday, amidst everything that's happening, I love this for her. She announced her new, like, I don't know what you would call it, apothecary line. Like, she has a lifestyle brand that she put out on Instagram yesterday. It's called American Riviera Orchard, which, forget about the fact that I don't know what in the trad wife is going on here where she's just cooking and living her best life in what looks like um, a nice old home and this is the logo for it. But like, could it get any better? The story just keeps giving and they still haven't shown us Kate Middleton, excuse me, Catherine, Princess all, of Wales. All they have to do. Show the video. That's, that's it. <laughs> Send the video. What, what, did, what did my man say? Say it again. Send the video. Come on now. That's all you have to do. In the words of Anthony Edwards. Shout out. Send the video. True feminist. Feminist icon. Just one. Anyway, as Miss Kim said in the chat, very happy for Meghan Markle. They are so far gone. They're trying to drag her into it now. They're like, oh, what Kate needs is support from... No. You missed that boat. Why do you... That boat has sailed across what the you, ocean wait, wait, blue. Wait, wait, wait. That doesn't even make sense. Who's getting some port from their brother-in-law's in-law right who's getting support from their brother-in-law's wife wife that that makes her it's technically their sister-in-law a sister-in-law but by like sister -in -law double by marriage. marriage like double marriage sure this isn't like no it's single marriage well okay. sister-in-law by marriage would but be it, that. It, this isn't like blood this isn't your husband's sister this is your husband's brother's wife like mm -hmm. she, there's no support there what are we doing here stop it stop it and just take a take an actual photo of kate Take an actual photo of Kate, show us a video of Kate, and all this stuff goes away. It's not that damn complicated. Send the video. Send the video. All right, lost in all of this as we come close to wrapping up the show. <laughs>
Casey Musgraves album dropped this morning too. Her fifth album is called Deeper Well. And I have always respected Casey Musgraves, but have not been a like hard Casey Musgraves stan. From what I've listened to of this album, I love this album. We are currently in a situation, we had no Wi-Fi this morning, no internet, so all I could do was listen to music. It was like the olden days. And so I listened to all, the entirety of the Justin Timberlake album. And then I listened to the first three tracks from Casey Musgraves' album, along with the song that has already uh, went up on the charts, which is called Architect. The first three songs are Cardinal, Deeper Well, and Too Good To Be True. And you throw an architect with that, this album calls to me. This album is beautiful. This album makes me want to run through a field with the daffodils and the sun is shining down and you're so tired that you just like throw yourself on the ground and you're laying in the grass and you say, oh, what a beautiful day. Like that's what this album makes me feel. So you should listen to it. Maybe not you. It's not your kind of no, music. No, it's not. It's not. So I it was just, it was really calming. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is nice. I'm gonna go into the weekend. Good. What are you listening to right now? I mean, we can end the show, but I been making my way through uh, Fear of a Black Planet, Public Enemy. Went back and gave that a listen uh, earlier this week. And there are songs I'm pretty sure they could not do today. Everybody talks about, oh, we can't say anything anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think they could done could have done uh, Burn Hollywood, Burn. I don't think they could do um, the anti-N-word machine. I don't think they could do that one. I don't think they could do Polly Wanna Cracker where it tackles interracial mm -hmm. dating and marriage in a really uh, pro-black way. Like there, there are songs on the album they couldn't have done it. And that's what makes the album so great. Like it's, it's a phenomenal album. Chuck D is a tremendous rapper, tremendous lyricist. Uh, one of the, in mine, like top 10 rappers of all time. Chuck D is on my list. I love it so much. But I hadn't seen anything new outside of the Justin Timberlake album that was like, oh, I need to give it that a listen. Like, I don't need to listen to Musgraves. No offense. I don't Did listen. Did you listen to the Ariana Grande album? No. Eternal Sunshine? No. I don't need to listen to Sexy Red. She dropped a new song. A couple of those Ariana songs okay. are really, like, really pure pop. Okay. Which sometimes you like pop. Sometimes I do. And I think some of these might scratch that itch. Are they, are they on par with Side to Side, God is a Woman? Right, those are my uh, uh, what's the what's the Seven one she was rings. doing? Seven rings. Like, are, are they that tight? Because if they are, mm -hmm. I might need to give it like that that hip hip pop, right? That that pop that is almost hip hop. Right. Yeah. No. Okay. Then. It's more of maybe an R and B pop okay. sound. Okay. I'll give you the songs that I've added a couple to my 2024 songs that I have liked the most. It, it is shaping up to be an exciting music here. Beyonce's album comes out in two weeks. I cannot wait for that. We found out it's going to be called Cowboy Carter. Uh, really wish she would have done something with country, but alas, Cowboy Carter will be the name of her second... What are we calling it? It's not her second Renaissance album, but part of this project where she is taking genres and putting her own spin on it. CJ has his bright hat on. I have to go do the Gary Parra show. Not have to. Get to do the Gary Parra show with Kelsey Rye Johnson today. She's guest hosting for GP. We will be back after a weekend. Grizzlies play. Tigers have nothing to do on Selection Sunday. But next Monday, we'll know who's in the NCAA tournament and it'll be a lot of fun. I will be watching St. John's UConn tonight because while Memphis <laughs> went downward, St. John's and Rick Pitino, they've won six in a row. They've won six in a row since he called his players unathletic said their lateral movement was the worst he had ever seen in all his years of coaching. They played number two UConn tonight in the Big East semifinals. That's my number one to watch game of the weekend. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your Friday, a wonderful weekend. Memphis! I'll see you at SmackDown. Bye! I'm really going to miss doing that. You can, you can still do it even though there's no commercial. SmackDown! Memphis! Oh, I'm supposed to teach you the rock bottom.